Hello, and welcome to the Televit Congressify walkthrough. Congressify is a browser-based application that enables bring your own device for delegates or users to interact with the meeting. So to get things started, we'll open the app up. Congressify is optimized for Google Chrome, but you could use other apps such as Firefox or Safari. So first we will launch Chrome. In here, I have already set Chrome to be pointed to the IP address of our server that's hosting Congressify. Some other ways that you can do this, again, if the devices are supplied by the organization, is you can just set the default IP address to the Congressify server. Uh, or another way is to have a QR code that people could scan um, with their device and take them there. Or you could simply type out the IP address and advise people to enter that into their browser. So to start, you would log in with a username and email. This information is set up using the COCON Meeting Manager suite. There's not necessarily an email that has to be responded to or anything. The person setting up the meeting simply enters in an email address and password that will be used by individual delegates. So I've typed that information and we click log in. Now that we're in, we get a snapshot of what's going on in our meeting. Right now we have an active meeting uh, for a town of Eagle Mountain that we have set up. So starting along the top in the upper left corner where we have the Televic logo. Moving towards the right we have the Eagle Mountain logo. This is a logo that the meeting manager or person setting up the meeting can load as well as the Eagle Mountain main. That's a title. Here we have a demo license so it's calling that out. We have the Congressify branding. We have a drop down menu that allows you to choose from quite a few different language options. And we have it spelled out in native characters so that people can recognize their language. And then we have a little icon over here, uh, which has my profile. I'm logged in as Trent Densley, as well as a logout button. So moving down back over to the left, we have a few different sub tabs. The first one is the agenda. So this agenda will follow what's happening in the meeting. So here we have quite a lengthy agenda. We can simply scroll through and get a preview of what's upcoming, but we can't dig too deep in the agendas until it's actually activated by the meeting manager. So we'll go through and activate a few of those items shortly. Then as you move over towards the right, in this case we have a system set up in request to speak mode. So there's a speaker list and a request list. If you're not in request to speak mode and you're just in a mode that allows someone to immediately activate their microphones, the request list will not show up and you will simply have a speaker list. So I will activate a few microphones and we see that we have a speaker live. And we have someone in request mode now also. Uh, in this case, we are set in a way that we have two live speakers, so two people have activated, and someone has joined the request list. I'll switch those off as well. Another nice feature to note is that if you have speech timers activated and your microphone is activated, you'll see that there is a speech timer in the list over to the right. Um, you'll see when I first turned the microphone on, it flashed at my uh, previous timer, and now it is counting down. This is a nice way for you to keep track of how long uh, you've got left in your speech. You'll also notice the different profile pictures of the speakers. This is just something that's also added in in the meeting manager if you so choose. Uh, you don't have to add it if you don't want to. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in my COCON meeting manager, so this is what the operator would be driving, and I'm going to activate a new agenda item. You'll notice that originally call to order was highlighted green, now roll call is highlighted green because I have just activated and moved it to that particular item, and you'll see that call to order is grayed out because we have already taken care of that agenda item. So. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down 
as a meeting operator here and I'm going to activate an agenda item that has a voting question in it. So you'll see here I jumped very far ahead. I jumped from item 2 down to about item 22 so we have to scroll down to see where that is. So now we see it's highlighted green there. So now I've just started the vote from my operator application. You'll see with the vote active that the message is asking you to please vote on your conference unit. This delegate is tied to a conference microphone that has physical voting buttons. Um, so we have that text nice and big at the top. But you also do have kind of the background and the information on the motion on your tablet. It makes it easier to view rather than, uh, say, having to look towards a projector somewhere. So I'm going to vote on the conference unit. And then back in the operator application, I'm going to stop the vote. You'll see that the screen automatically changes when the vote has been stopped. And if we go back down to that particular agenda item with voting, we have a snapshot of how people voted. In this case, it was just one vote and voted yes. You can also click results for detailed information. You can look at how people voted if you choose to make that public information. Um, so you can see how your colleagues voted. This can become uh, increasingly helpful if you're in a larger meeting application, say you're looking at 50, 100 or more delegates, this can help you really get a detailed breakdown of what was happening. And you can always go back using the back arrow out of the voting results. So just to see how the vote uh, advances, if you will, or moves to the next agenda item, I will activate a non-voting agenda item. And you'll see that the motion with the voting options does remain and you can continue to get a snapshot of how people voted. So moving along, we will go back to the left hand side and look at a couple of the other tabs here. So in the meeting information tab, we have the status of the meeting. If it's running, we have the time that the meeting was scheduled for. There's an area for a description of the meeting and there's a list of participants that are in this meeting. And you can click on respective participants for additional information. If there is a group that they belong to, you'll see that is in there. The title, you can also add a birthday and a description, biography, etc. if you so choose. You'll notice that there was a back arrow and I can just use that to return to the previous screen. Moving back over to the left, another tab that we'll look at is the documents tab. Right now, these documents are being hosted on the same computer that is running my CoCon applications, my uh, meeting manager for setup, my operator application, etc. Uh, these documents could also live, say, on a central server somewhere. The computer just needs to be pointed to that file location. If it is, say, a central server, then it would allow uh, multiple people to simply add documents in for people to view during the meeting. So you'll see that we have four different PDFs loaded in here. And I'll just pick the top one here and look into it. So the PDFs, uh, you'll see it took uh, maybe a second or two to render. Depending on how big the PDF is, some larger documents can take uh, several more seconds than that. Uh, but you'll see that there is a PDF that I can now scroll through and look at. I do have zoom controls if I need to get a better snapshot. Uh, this is quite helpful for people to be able to work and look off of uh, documents that are being discussed and kind of view some more details on them. So now that we've gone through the Congressify app, I'm going to show you a few other things. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to stop my meeting. Now you'll see that the meeting is stopped. We simply have a page that says you do not have any active meetings. So if there are no meetings activated, this is what people will see when they log in. And the last thing I will do is I will go to my profile, log out, it will ask me to confirm and it takes me back to the login page. So thanks for watching and if you have any additional questions feel free to contact us or visit our website at www.televic-conference.com.